Can I do it? Well, probably not. But it's going to be fun to try. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. So yes, I did not expect to be doing this video, kind of like I didn't expect to be doing the last video I did. Uh, I, I just, I don't do videos, multiple videos in a week, hardly ever. But uh, anyway, yes, I was able to uh, squeeze in just a couple more uh, St. Vinny's thrift stores, an another mini St. Vinny's crawl, mini Vinny, <laughs> mini Vinny crawl at the very end of 2023. And uh, so yes, this is uh, the, the second part, uh, which I didn't expect to have, of my year-end thrift store crawl video and a uh, plus one or two other things well actually just one other thing uh last purchase of the year uh because i am hoping uh this is what i hinted at in my cold open of sec a few seconds ago i am really hoping i'm going to really try to do a no buy january i'm going to try not to buy any cds during the month of january for a couple of reasons uh, i've mentioned al also in a couple recent videos, I've got a huge backlog of listening, uh, not just CDs, but uh, records and cassettes as well. Uh, and I really want to try paring that down. But also, um, I'm going to take a little trip, uh, I plan to take a little trip up to Seattle in uh, mid-February. So I really want to, you know, put a moratorium on CD buying so I can kind of work up some anticipation for doing that. Um, it, it'll be my first time just browsing around Seattle. We passed through there a couple of times years and years ago. Uh, so yeah, I I'm, won't know my way around there very much. I plan on taking public transit. Uh, and there are several CD stores, uh, or you know, record stores that sell CDs, that are on the uh, light rail line, or just within a couple blocks of the light rail line. And uh, that's where I plan on concentrating uh, my efforts there. But anyway, uh, more on that in the wrap-up video from that when I get back. But uh, Yes, I, I want to try and, uh, as I said, uh, build up some anticip anticipation for my Seattle trip. And I also have been feeling a little bit of burnout, I guess, from CD shopping. I found this out. I realized this the other day when I went into House of Records on my lunch break from work. And, you know, usually I get a little bit of a, you know, giddiness and looking forward to... Oh, sorry, I'm bouncing around. It's causing the uh, tray that the camera's on, uh, the, the tablet's on to bounce anyway. Uh, I usually have a little bit of giddiness when I go into House of Records, when I look at their CDs and records, but the other day, it was like it was like a flat line, you know, so that's kind of a hint that, uh, yes, maybe I really am just getting a little bit tired of buying CDs lately. So, yes, I want to try and hit the reset button on that to maybe refresh, you know, as I said, refresh, get a little more uh, anticipation, uh, renewed interest in CD buying by not buying anything for a month. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be successful at this or not, but, uh, cause you know, I'm, I'm kind of an impulse CD buyer. So, uh, but I'm really going to try and put in a concerted effort. You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, not to equate, um, buying records or CDs, you know, with any serious addictions like alcohol or drugs, but, you know, with, uh, any 12 step program, it's taking it one day at a time. I know that much. I've never been an addict of any, uh, any substance abuse addict uh, anywhere, but I know enough, and I've got friends who have told me that, you know, it's, it's a one-day-at-a-time thing. If any of you out there are recovering uh, alcohol alcoholics or drug, drug addicts or anything like that, um, my heart goes out to you. I don't identify with you personally, but uh, I, I feel you. I, it's, a, it's a struggle. I'm sure it is. Uh, so, yes, I, 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 think, I think about you guys every once in a while. Not sure where that's going. That probably sounds a little weird, but uh, just, you know, just to let you know that, you know, people out there are thinking about you, your struggles, that kind of thing. But anyway, I'm rambling. I don't want to make this video really long. So let's go ahead and get into the haul. Um, I've got uh, maybe another couple dozen like I did uh, the other day uh, with, with part one of my year-end CD haul. And so, yes, not a lot. Um, well, it's a lot in regular terms. You know, not a lot of people come home with 24 CDs uh, in a day. But uh, for me, it's not a lot. Uh, and yes, it's as I said, I'm a compulsive CD buyer. So anyway, uh, starting out with a little uh, instrumental and new age kind of stuff here. Uh, I've gotten to like 
this guy or these guys, uh, Otmar Liebert and Luna Negra. This is their fourth studio album. I've, I think I got their first one. Did I get it in a bargain bag or not? I can't remember, but I got one. Oh no, a friend of mine sent it to me. That's right. And so that's how I got started. Uh, just kind of over the last couple of years, I've been buying, you know, what their next one as I see them. And this is their fourth one, their fourth album and the fourth one that I have. Uh, the Hours Between Night and Day. So it's a, a kind of a new age uh, instrumental act. Uh, Art Mar Otmar Liebert, I believe, is a guitarist, if memory serves. And my memory hasn't been serving me so well lately. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it's nothing clinical. Uh, just uh, I t just get a little scatterbrained sometimes, I admit. Uh, next thing we have is also in the jazz uh, category. This is a group called Combo. It's a combo called Combo. Um, uh, the album is The Big Blast. I've I've heard of these guys, and I might have actually listened to this album at one point, but I don't remember what it is, or uh, um, how good it was, or anything. But yes, we see uh, on the uh, <laughs> back cover here, we see a bass, an acoustic bass, a keyboard, and some drums. So, uh, yeah, kind of an acoustic <clears throat> jazz combo of sorts. Next one we have is uh, from my uh, kind of a, a, a repurchase many years later, decades later, from my New Age uh, phase. Uh, an album called Island by David Arkenstone and Andrew White. This is from the Narada New Age label. And I did have this one, more or less. I got it in, uh, a couple of years ago, you might remember, I had a what I called my bi a binder haul. Two of those great big, they must have been four-inch thick, uh, three-ring binders with those uh, pages for with CD pockets in them. They were on the freebie shelf at House of Records, full of CDs, but none of the CDs had inserts. But a lot of them were the old New Age stuff that I was into way back in the day. So I did save this one from that binder haul, um, but it didn't have any inserts, so I had to go online and download the front and back inserts uh, off the internet and print them out on my inkjet printer. So that's what I had, kind of a, a placeholder of sorts. A CD was in really good condition. A lot of those CDs actually were in excellent condition. And I have kept several of them, um, you know, they still have the inkjet printed uh, inserts in them. But when I when I see one with the authentic real inserts at a store as I'm going along, I go ahead and buy it to uh, to legitimately replace the uh, the one with the home printed uh, inserts. So yes, very cool stuff, kind of a semi-electronic uh, music, very nice, relaxing, chill out kind of stuff. Then we have uh, an artist. I've got two, two of his albums so far. Uh, Arturo Sandoval. He's a jazz trumpeter, and yeah, actually this one had an old House of Records sticker, price sticker on it, from back in uh, 2003. So yeah, it uh, had been there for a while, and I guess it had been in the previous owner's collection for a while, uh, 20 years. So, but yes, a jazz trumpeter, and he actually appeared on. Megan Trainer's latest album. So yeah, she kind of showing some love to the old, uh, you know, jazz uh, artists of the 80s, 90s, 2000s. So uh, yes, 1994 is when this album was put out. So yes, I've, I've enjoyed what I've heard of Arturo Sandoval so far, so I thought I'd pick that one up. And then we have, this one was actually still sealed when I picked it up. I actually took the, took the cellophane off. Uh, Arthur Fiedler and the Boston Pops. And this is just a collection of instrumental songs, uh, on the Time Life label, it's a compilation assembled from previous albums. So yes, a whole bunch of instrumental stuff on there. A uh, big fan of uh, the Boston Pops during John Williams' tenure as conductor, but I don't have very many uh, albums from the Arthur Fiedler era, so I'll pick that one up. Now this guy, I've heard about him before. I have never checked his stuff out, or I, I've, I've listened to a couple of things incidentally, and they were a little weird. This was, you know, not my thing, I guess. And this was a couple of decades ago when my tastes were a little bit different, so I thought I'd ch check this out, guy out again. Philip Glass. Uh, this is a, an album of solo piano songs, hence the title, Solo Piano. Uh, so, yeah, thought I'd check this out. Then, excuse me while I re reshuffle here. And then we're on to some of the pop and rock and stuff. Um, the Paula Cole Band, Amen, this is her, her or their third album, or was it their fourth album? I can't remember if they had an indie album before her major label debut. But yes, I've got her first two albums, so I picked this one up as well. 
good artist. And then Van Morrison with his album in Enlightenment. Not a fan of Van Morrison with his uh, recent uh, sociopolitical uh, opinions, especially during you know during the COVID era and uh, uh, since. But uh, he's he's a good uh, musician. So, and this one this kind of surprised me to find this at. And again, everything that you see here at the St. Vinnie stores ninety nine cents, including Flaming Pie by Paul McCartney. I am not particularly a Paul McCartney fan. I'm not. I'm not not a fan of Paul McCartney either. It's just I've never really bothered exploring his stuff beyond uh, Pipes of Peace, I think, is the album that I have of his from the 80s. So, yeah, I figured, hey, for 99 cents, give an album of his a try that I've never heard before. So, And this one, another one I have never had before, and, you know, it's kind of one of those perennial favorite famous albums that, you know, Everybody has in their collection. Not quite. Uh, 10,000 Maniacs, MTV Unplugged. Yeah, I tried a couple of their studio albums. They didn't stick. And th this was recently, within the last year. Didn't stick, but I thought I would give... Uh, because I think their most famous single came from their uh, MTV Unplugged concert. And that was Because the Night. So, uh, yeah. I think, th I think that's what it was. So, yeah, I thought I'd give that one a try. And here we have... Uh, this is one of those blind or deaf buys that I never heard of the artist before, haven't sampled their music, but the CD looked intriguing. Uh, it's a group called Cash Cash, and I looked them up on Wikipedia, and they are uh, like an electro-pop, synth-pop type of uh, group, or electro-rock, maybe. Uh, so yeah, thought I'd go ahead and pick it up and give it a try. And uh, that's one of the things that I'm definitely going to try and curb during this next month, during January, is the... Uh, the impulse buys like this of artists I've never heard of. I'm really kind of hoping that, you know, nothing super amazing and hard to find comes along during the month of January at the local stores, because then I'm not going to be able to resist. Um, and I might make that an exception, you know, just the mundane stuff that I might just buy just for the heck of it that isn't that unusual. I'm going to not buy that stuff. But if something wow comes along, I might have to uh, make an exception. Anyway. Long story short, the the impulse buys with you know that kind of stuff that I never heard heard of before, is I'm going to do everything I can to pause that for a month. And then we have Tony Bennett, uh, the old stalwart uh, classic pop crooner vocalist, uh, with his album The Playground. This is a a uh, an album geared toward kids, as you could probably assume by the title, and it's got uh, duets with Kermit the Frog. Rosie O'Donnell, and Elmo. I, I remember the, uh, the big Tickle Me Elmo phase back in the, was it the 90s, early 90s, mid 90s, and I'm still kind of recovering from that. So uh, that's, that's the only reason why I roll my eyes at Elmo. So no offense to Elmo fans. But yes, this has got um, Accentuate the Positive. Not all of these are necessarily children's songs, but songs that kids could like. And uh, oh, Put on a Happy Face, that's the song that he, he does with Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, Swinging on a Star, uh, Be in Green, he does that one with Kermit the Frog, of course. And uh, When You Wish Upon a Star, It's Only a Paper Moon, The Bare Necessities from The Jungle Book. This is going to be a fun album. It, this is one of those albums that my sister would have loved. Uh, so yeah, that's, I'm probably going to definitely feel my sister's presence when I'm listening to that album. And then this guy... I saw these at uh, the store the last time I was there, the, the thrift store, and didn't pick them up. They're, they're a little bit scratched up, but I decided they're still here, so I'll go ahead and uh, I have no reason to think they won't play. They're not that badly scratched up. I won't buy something if it's really badly scratched up, but I'd give it a shot. Uh, said, uh, an artist named Steve Tyrell, kind of like in the vein of Tony Bennett. He's a uh, classic uh, traditional pop crooner, and uh, yeah, he does uh, does the Great American Songbook stuff. And uh, yes, this is his album, uh, uh, New Standard, and then Standard Time, and then we've got This Guy's In Love With You. So, yes, and I, I don't know if this one is necessarily a back rack. Uh, not, not necessarily, just, it's just named after a back rack song, but uh, yeah, I've heard a little bit of him in the past and uh, liked his voice, so I thought I would give him a shot. Uh, then another couple of uh, holiday albums I picked up. Why not buy holiday albums the week after Christmas? 
Uh, this one I, and this is another one that I saw at, uh, yeah, the Steve, the three Steve Tyrell and this one were at the, the Garfield store, the Garfield Street, St. Vinny's. Non-locals, that won't, that won't make any difference to non-locals. They won't know otherwise, but, uh, that's one of the ones I go to. Uh, and this one was there also, uh, still there from the last time I was there, so I picked it up and had almost bought it the last time. Uh, Judy Collins, a holiday album from Judy Collins, Christmas at the Biltmore Estate. And yes, I've just recently gotten into Judy Collins. She is a classic uh, folk pop artist from the 60s. She got her start in the 60s, I believe. So yeah, beautiful voice on her. And then a two-disc set of Anne Murray Christmas songs. So yes, for 99 cents, why not? And that, yes, there's lots of... The, the cases, I haven't recased these CDs yet, so I need to uh, do so. The cases don't look very good, very good. But uh, yeah, two discs full of Christmas songs from Anne Murray. And then we're get down to the last few things. These are all two-disc sets, except for the last one is a three-disc set. But yes, and these are some more things. It's like, wow, I found these at the thrift store and in really good condition. Aretha Franklin, live at Fillmore East, West, excuse me, live at Fillmore West. Uh, yes, a two-disc set, and yes, the original concert and some outtakes and stuff. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta love some of the stuff that I found. And this one, I'm not, I'm not necessarily a fan of the Rat Pack, but you know, I saw this one, and this is actually a CD and a DVD of a live Rat Pack. Um, concert, or, or multi, I think it was done, recorded from multiple concerts. But uh, yeah, again, a CD and a DVD for 99 cents. So to give it a try. Yeah, I, I like, I mean, I like Frank, Frank Sinatra. I've never been particularly fond of Dean Martin. He's just never clicked with me. But I do kind of like Sammy Davis Jr. He's, he's, he's got style and charisma and class, or he did, rest his soul. And then the Essential Janis Joplin. Yes, 99 cents. Couple little scratches on the CDs, but otherwise, I mean, you know, fantastic. Worth more than 99 cents. So, uh, yeah, I, I've got her album uh, Cheap Thrills with Big Brother and the Holding Company, but I don't have any other. Jan no, no, I, I also have Pearl, but uh, those are the only two albums. But, uh, yeah, could not pass up a two, di two discs of Janis Joplin for 99 cents. And then the last thing is a three-disc set. This is Ultimate Disney. Yes, songs from Disney movies, Disney theme parks, Disney TV shows. This covers everything from the early stuff, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, all the way up through Lilo and Stitch. And uh, yeah, this is actually a European release, funny enough. And so, yeah, I will hold the uh, uh, track listing up there for you to look at if you want to pause the video and look at it. So, yes, an interesting list of songs. I'm not sure how much overlap there is between this one and the two one-disc Disney titles that I got last month. I think I got them during my for my birthday haul. Uh, but, yeah, I figure why... You know, and, and the discs are... A couple of the discs are a little bit scratched up, but uh, they should play fine. So, yeah, couldn't pass it up for 99 cents for three discs. And I also found a uh, one cassette I came home with. Uh, this is a the Manhattan Transfer and Gene Pastilli. I don't know who that is, but yeah, the album is called Jukin. Uh, yes, always curious, uh, always up to listening to a little Manhattan Transfer. Uh, and case in point, this is my my last non thrift store purchase of 2023, and I'm so glad I went there on Friday. What was it? The 29th was uh, this past Friday. Because because I because I'm you know planning on not buying anything for January. Uh, 29th of December, did I just say January a minute ago? 29th of January, yes, 29th of December. So yes, plan on not buying anything in January, as I said. But uh, yes, I was very happy to see this because I'd been looking for a two disc set of these guys, and I found it for four dollars at Epic Seconds, the Manhattan Transfer Anthology, uh, down in Birdland. Yes, two discs. Of theirs, I've got a one disc greatest hits that uh, this is going to uh, supplant. I think it's the, I think that's the right word. So yeah, I've always kind of enjoyed their uh, their brand of vocal jazz, kind of peppy, fun stuff to listen to. So yeah, that is my final St. Vinny's thrift haul of 2023. 
and uh, hopefully my last uh, CD purchase for a month. And uh, yes, I plan on bringing, as I mentioned also in my previous video, I plan on bringing back my playlist video, which where I just talk about what I've listened to in the past month. And uh, through that, now that I won't have Bargain Bag to uh, mess around with anymore each month, uh, I'll have time for that and for leisure listening and listening to pare down my uh, backlog of listening. And that's what I plan to populate my playlist videos with. So yes... Uh, hopefully my impulse to buy CDs will be outweighed by the uh, availability of lots and lots of CDs to listen to when I get home. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you like it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to su subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite uh, fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.